Hello. Um, just a few thoughts for the day. Um, mainly directed towards the Irish Scientologists because um, I see them on a regular basis and I, my heart goes out to them. Um, first of all, to the, the Ryan family, I'd like to express my um, sympathy for the loss of their father. Um, ooh, sympathy, that's low toned. And I really want to, I, I'm probably going to be covering old ground here, but um, I'm called by these people like covertly hostile and 1.1 and all the ramifications that that has. But like, to be covert means to be hidden, and the hostility is hidden. My hostility is up front, and it's not actually hostility. It's a desire to bring you to the truth about your so-called religion. Now, I maybe make mistakes in my methodology, but the aim is the same. I want you guys to know what I now know. Um, it, it's simple. Now, hopefully, I have a few things that might help you to um, reach that point. First of all, I'm not covertly hostile. I'm not even actually hostile, if you can think with that. I'm not hostile. I know some Scientologists who are, and you know who they might be. But, like, let's just, let's just look at the whole thing. Like, I mean, you guys probably feel that you're under siege, and you should do. Because the entire world is against you. And they're not against you because you've got some superior knowledge and you know these things. They're against you because you are the bad guys. You are the guys who are actually making things worse for everybody. The aims of Scientology are a world without insanity, crime and war. And certainly, number one and two are actually encouraged by Scientology activities. Now, they haven't caused a war yet. But, you know, I actually consider that what I'm engaged in is a bit of a war, even though it's like a personal thing. I also read The Art of Sun Tzu, like L. Ron Hubbard did. Um, but anyway, you, you can't see all this because you're in a bubble, and you're not even allowed to look. Hubbard says, Hubbard's so clever. Like, he, he'll say one thing, and then he'll say something else that completely contradicts what he just said. For example, uh, in the month that he wrote The What is Greatness, policy letter, which I actually quite like, you know, he's preaching tolerance and, you know, if you can still love your fellow man, blah, 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 despite what he does, then you're great. In the same month, he forms the Guardian's office and, and you know, gets them to start uh, gaming people. So it's like he's got this face where he says nice things, but underneath, oh wait, hang on a second, I'm describing someone covertly hostile. Hey, bing, cognitions. But anyway, you guys are in the bubble and you can't see this, you know, I mean, I, I doubt that even what I just said makes any sense to you. And finally, I just want to talk about, like, doubt. I mean, it's, it's human nature to ask questions about things and, and to actually question what you're told and question what, what goes on. And I'm thinking again of the look, don't listen that Hubbard said. Um, on the one hand, you're, in, you know, told to look, don't listen. Let's just look at the doubt formula. Let's suppose you've got some doubts about Scientology or some aspect of Scientology. You're immediately told to, to apply doubt. When you apply doubt, that immediately puts you in a lower condition and you don't want to be in a lower condition. So you're actually prevented from doubting Scientology because of the use of conditions as a, as a control mechanism and as an as a authoritarian tool. And that's what goes on. And the whole of Scientology is like that. On the one hand, he says, look, don't listen. And on the other hand, oh, yeah, you can look, but you'll be in doubt if you do. And let's talk about the doubt formula. Um, I once asked Dermot Ryan to do a doubt formula for real, and he'd find himself standing shoulder to shoulder with me on the opposite side of the street with the critics. And he came back to me the following week and said he'd applied the doubt formula, and he was still in. Well, Dermot really you see to discover the actual statistics of a group you would have to know what they were not just what people tell you they are and yes it does it does actually uh, uh, require some doubting and it also requires some finding out some facts 
It actually um, is applying look, don't listen. I bumped into Michael O'Donnell and he told me that the reason he knows that Scientology is expanding is because of what he's told at the international events. Michael, they're lying to you. Those international events are full of crap. Um, the only people who talk about Scientology expansion actually are Scientology events. It's not happening anywhere. And you look around you, you just look around you, you can see it. It's not happening. And Scientology breaks the law on a continuous basis. A man was going to go in to start a service on Saturday, and myself, John McGee, and uh, Sauté persuaded him not to go in. You told him that you could help him because his wife was mad. So here's a guy whose wife has got problems, she's crazy, she's mad, whatever. You've told that man that you can help him with his mad wife. That's practicing medicine without a license. That's actually illegal. That's another crime that you guys have committed. Other than the, the covering up all the things that, that people confess to you, which really you should be telling the cops about. So there's a lot of things going on. And like, you guys are the bad guys. We are the good guys exposing your bad. So come on, make the effort. Try doing a doubt formula for real. Finding out what are the real statistics. Because when you do, you will be shocked. Scientology is not expanding. It hasn't been expanding for the last, certainly since the 90s anyway. It's going downhill. And the reason it's going downhill is because it's based on lies. <sighs> My rant is over for the day. So, bye guys. You know, I love you. I wish you all the best. And please, please, for God's sake, wake up.